Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the voice of reason. Well, today we're continuing our ongoing coverage of the war between the Russian Federation and the North Atlantic Treaty Organization and its NATO, I'm sorry, its Ukrainian proxies. I just said that twice. All right, so we have finally obtained the uh, the secret plan the secret plan by uh, Volodymyr Zelensky we can only imagine that in his bunker and a in, under a building in Kiev in a in a super hardened structure you know po- possibly in western ukraine who knows where he, where he actually usually resides we just we just don't know but we, we can only imagine in a tropane, alkaloid-induced period of super euphoric confidence that Volodymyr Zelensky concocted the plan that he took to Western leaders. Now, this plan apparently has troubled many Western leaders. The crux of the plan that was, again, con- concocted in a tropane, alkaloid-induced period of euphoric confidence was a large-scale Tomahawk cruise missile strike on hundreds of targets throughout the Russian Federation. That was the plan. That was the plan. So first, the United States would had to have secretly shipped Tomahawk cruise missiles, ground-launched Tomahawk cruise missile systems into the Ukraine, or, or they were just going to launch these cruise missiles from Poland or Romania at targets throughout the Russian Federation. It was estimated that planners believed in this tropane alkaloid induced period of euphoric confidence that the North Atlantic Treaty Organization and its Ukrainian proxies, Volodymyr Zelensky, would have utilized up to a thousand cruise missiles, Tomahawk cruise missiles, against Russian targets. That was the plan. Well, why did they come up with this plan? I mean, was it entirely uh, Volodymyr Zelensky and his uh, tropane alkaloid induced period of euphoric confidence? Possibly. Or were there multiple people in the bunker planning this operation? Well, in all probability, yes. So, the question is, why? Why a massive Tomahawk cruise missile strike against Russia? Well, obviously it would, it would bring in the United States and in, in, in the actual uh, the militaries, boots on the ground per se, of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Russia would have to respond. There would be no alternative but for Russia to respond if the Ukrainians started using massive amounts of American-made Tomahawk cruise missiles. Now, what's interesting is the Aegis Ashore platform that is in, that is in Romania is designed to have the capability or the capacity to launch Tomahawk cruise missiles. So again, where were these Tomahawks going to get launched in, uh, in Zelensky's mind? Well, again, we, we don't know. We just, we just don't know at this point. But again, this, this, this shows you that the 
Ukrainian military, and especially Volodymyr Zelensky, with all the uh, conscription challenges that are happening, the, uh, the, 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 the really disgruntled populace that now exists uh, inside of the Ukraine, that a, a uh, ground war, a ground counterattack, a ground counteroffensive by the Ukrainians is simply off the table. completely off the table. In fact, uh, as we speak, uh, the, uh, the Donbass, uh, Zaporizhia area of operations is collapsing for the Ukrainians. And uh, look, I've talked about this a lot, and I've talked about this within the context of a war of attrition, okay? If you look at past wars of attrition that are purposely driven and designed to cause a nation-state's military to collapse from within. This is what the Russians are doing. And we're now finally starting to see the fruits of that labor, of that, uh, of that uh, continued Russian uh, war of attrition operation designed to break the back of the Ukrainian military. And again, I, I, uh, I like to do this because it shows you that, in fact, these battle lines are not fixed, uh, the, the, the Russian uh, juggernaut continues to move forward, uh, overrunning and overwhelming and destroying Ukrainian frontline combat units that are in their way. And again, let's just go back and have a look at what's happened over the last several days, a couple of weeks. So again, specifically, uh, Sally Duff. This was a, an incredibly fortified redoubt. Okay, the Ukrainians did not want Selidov to fall. Let's let's look at what what, is, what has happened. So fixed, enveloped, Glonass glide bombs, and then overrun. Again, fixed, enveloped. Glonass glide bomb and overrun. And you're going to see this all along the line of contact. This is just going to continue. It is not going to stop. But then what, what eventually is going to happen is the Ukrainian army, the ground forces, are just going to fall apart. They're going to throw down their guns and it will evaporate. And then the question is, what happens next? Will the Russians go all the way to Kiev? Will they go all the way to Odessa? In, you know, at the start of this conflict, I would have said no. I would have said probably not. But given what has happened, and given the fact that the Russians now believe that the Ukrainian state is so much of a threat in terms of its constant uh, desire to join the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, its constant desire to see uh, regime change inside of the Russian Federation, that I'm not sure what exactly kind of state remains of the Ukraine post-conflict. Again, a lot has changed inside of this conflict in terms of what was considered prior and what is being considered now. I, I have to imagine right now in which you, ha you have Volodymyr Zelensky advocating for a uh, hundreds of, of Tomahawk cruise missile attack against targets all over the Russian Federation, I have to wonder just what the Russians are thinking. And, and given the stance of Volodymyr Zelensky, this, this whole concept of, of, uh, of pre-2022 or even uh, pre-2014 and the return of the Crimea. Look, the Crimea is not going back to, to, to the Ukraine. It's, it's just not. You, you have to write that off. 
But for whatever reason, the uninformed urbanites that run most of the ununited states of America actually believe that the Ukrainians can win this war and reconquer the uh, the Crimea. And that's just not going to happen. It's, it's off the table. Now, again, just like the... the uh, the uh, tropane, alkaloid-induced, eu- euphoric confidence uh, mission of obtaining <laughs> Tomahawk cruise missiles to attack Russia from the United States. <clears throat> I, you know, what, what can you say? A- at least cooler heads here in the uh, the ununited states at this point said, <laughs> "Hold on, guys, let's let's have a look at this. What what, what did he just ask for? What does he want to do?" And how does he want to do this? And and have we discussed any ramifications of this? And then it was leaked, and uh, and old Valdemir is is angry now. He uh, he he went back to his uh, to his hardened bunker in an undisclosed location. <sighs> got into his uh, tropane alkaloid induced period of overconfidence, and is now. And is now jabber jawing, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, we're continuing to watch the uh, the Donbass offensive. We are continuing to watch the collapse of the Ukrainian military, and yes, uh, less than a week away till the United States possibly enters a state of civil conflict. And I think we all know why. More to come. As always, thanks for joining us. Have a good day.